Hello everyone, welcome back to Lawrence. Tries to justify everything he's been doing over the last ooh, countless hours in Factorio. <laughs> so in the um, last episode, as you probably remember, I cleared out this um, area along here and pushed the biters back and developed and, and built up this new wall all the way along the top here to protect the uh, some an extra chunk of territory. That went reasonably well, apart from a slightly unfortunate ending. <laughs> Um, and so I then put in the, uh, I've then used my um, robots to put in these um, all these robot ports all the way along here and the um, and the and the power to go with them. So this entire area is now is now usable and can be built in. So my plan all, all along that for that was to um, build up a, a system that's going to produce all of the science packs or at least the first the first six of them so far as you can see here. Um, and then any more I produce will go carry on along here and probably take up more space. But we'll see how that goes um, when I get round to it. So for each of these, we've got the, the main railway line that runs back and forth along here in both in both directions, um, and then for each one, we've got several stations, uh, as, as many as required, for unloading all of the resort the incoming resources. So in this case, we've got um, iron and copper being unloaded. These these first resource pa uh, science packs are nice and easy. We're making the cogs here, and then those are being fed out at a high enough rate to all of these machines to which combine them with copper and produce the yellow circuits. Those are then fed back down here to the these, uh, these um, boxes where they can then be picked up by a train. So that's as far as I've got with the, um, the general system. I haven't got anywhere yet that's requesting all of the science packs. So I'm probably going to put that in somewhere nearby, maybe maybe in this area here where I'll put in sort of six sta six stations and, gr and then gradually more and more of them and have and, and have a big sort of science area around here with loads of science packs in it and belts feeding those. But that's, that's to come. Then after doing that one, I did the uh, the red ones as well, which is, is rel also relatively simple. I have the uh, iron, and this one requires circuits. So, so the idea here is that there's a certain level of ingredients, things that are used rel relatively commonly, and those are all being built over here on the on the bus. So we've got the things like we've got all the all the yellow circuits being built here and being spat out onto into these stations. We've got some of the other things like um, batteries being pushed out here as well, and then up here. That means up here we don't need quite as much complexity. We don't need to put so we don't need to pull in all of the ingredients for producing these plates, for example, which are th these circuit boards, which I think includes wood and copper and maybe something else. I, I, I can't remember exactly, but it gets worse the further on you go. So here that means we only need two two uh, stations dropping off the components, which you can then turn into again cogs and inserters, um, and then oh and belts as well, and those get turned into red science packs you get fed down again to a station and I seem to have picked up some um, some belts here as well so something must have gone wrong at some point when I was building this I should nip, should, should nip up there and uh, pull those spare belts out before they get sent somewhere where they shouldn't then the next one is uh, I think this is grey science yes grey science packs now this one's struggling a bit because I'm out of steel and what's this one for own oh, crushed stone as well to make to make the walls. That, so this this is um, not going quite so well because I, I've run out of various comp uh, supplies. But I'm going to go into that in a bit more detail in the next episode because so there's a bit more. There's quite a lot to talk about there, and it's a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a long chain of yak shaving. One thing I did screw up here is I managed to miscount how many different resources there are that go into these products. So the um, got all the inputs at the bottom here, but then rails going up to take the outputs at the top and. I'm not too bothered about that because I've been trying to build these mostly, well, I, I messed up here, but the idea was I was going to try and fit them all in inside the area that's taken up by the station so that they're, um, they can be copied and pasted in next to each other. I also discovered fairly recently that I screwed up somewhere else here. Uh, where was it? Was it this one? No, maybe... No, it wasn't this one. This one's working fine. We've then got the, the blue science, which... Um, Again, this is an, was another one that was a solved problem, and this is uh, tick, ticking over quite happily, as you can. S I think. No, I don't seem to have made any of this one either. Is that because I don't have any? S this doesn't look quite finished. I need to go and have a look at this one. But the general idea is that again, we'll make make the blue circuits here, uh, blue science here, then we make another one. This is probably pink, I think. Yes, purple. Uh, so purple science here. This is the one I, I've um, where I've messed up because I've I've got the um, these walls being fed to 
here instead of stone instead of stone bricks being fed to there. I think that might be because I made a bit. I just copied the um, this system over here, which is making bricks and turning them into walls. Whereas over here, I want the actual bricks themselves to be turned into um, electric furnaces. So yeah, that's another thing that needs to be fixed. Um, maybe I should have checked over this slightly more carefully before showing it off. But never mind. And then here we've got the pink science, which is the next one I was planning to create, but I realised that this one was actually simpler, so I thought I'd do it first. As you can see here, this has an enormous number of different inputs, and another one where I messed up and forgot that I needed that. Whatever it is. Oh, electric engines, right, yes. Not electronic engineers. <laughs> the two are subtly different. Um, but again, yeah, we've got an enormous number of different inputs here, because we're making all these different tiers of belts, all the way up to blue and then robot frames and then filter inserters all the, again all the way up to blue so there's a lot of fortunately these are all quite quick things to make which means I don't need enormous number of machines to make them but I do need a large number of inputs because you do you, down here as you can see you're using I'm using iron for the first one uh, then iron and tin for the second one and then bronze bronze brass bronze bronze I think for the third one and cobalt steel for the fourth one and it just gets so it just gets more and it gets more and more complicated you start to add in extra things like steel gears and cobalt gears and bearings and so on so it yeah the idea is that as you go further into the different levels it makes it more and more complicated I think for one of these as well I ended up having to I won't say cheat slightly, but I ended up using um, an insert, in, in, a sort of 90 degree inserter because I miscounted. And this one here, you can see the uh, the really long inserter. So this is this is picking up from three squares away and putting down three squares away. Um, but that seemed easier at the time than putting in a yet another um, machine producing the 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 iron gears because I. To be honest, I forgot about them. It's another one of those little screw ups. And there was there isn't any room around here to put it. I'd have ended up having to move these chrome things over here or something like that and it seemed easier to do it this way this should work but again I think I'm short of ah yes this is this is another one where I'm um, I'm short of some of the components the batteries have come in happily those are being built off on the bus but the electric engines are supposed to be coming up to here because there's a shortage of steel in the base at the moment is that what's missing here oh no that's the engines sorry um hang on the both called engines what's going on there Something's going wrong. Yeah, this is clearly something else. Um, I don't know what I've done here. <laughs> Again, I'm going to have to come and have a look at this and work out why it's broken. Uh, so let's move on from a little bit from what from all the screw ups I've been making and say so this is this is the general the general idea of what I'm trying to build at the moment. So the having the um, the different sciences being built up in order along here, and yes, they're going to take up more and more space. But the other theory is that these are each of these is set up to produce three or four science per second, um, and so they're they're all built to to produce at the same speed, and so that should mean that once I get a suitable, suitably sized science eating facility down here that will get through them at about at the same rate. That they should all carry on producing at, at, at the same rate, and then later, if I decide I need to, I want to do science faster, I can just cop I can copy and paste this entire thing to probably somewhere else over here, somewhere maybe by that point. But it's nice and easy and completely modular, and so it's it's going to be re really really easy to copy, and then the science. One I could copy. I could copy off another one as well, um, or I could just have the, have a, a second one that feeds into here. We'll see how how it goes and how much space I've got for expansion at, when, when I get to that point. Okay, so that's one of the big things I've been up to. Another one is that I realised I was forever short of silicon ore down here because it was being produced as it's essentially almost as a byproduct of the tin production down here and tin production is now backed up as well because I'm not using enough solder at the moment but we'll get onto that later so what I've done in order to get around that is over here I've built up another one of these um, what are they called the, another one of these catalyst based facilities which takes in uh, sapphirite and bobmonium crushes them and now we have to for this one we had to float them first um, and then get out to get the um, the chunks out so instead of getting instead of just being crushed whatever ore it is that we sort we then have to get the get it onto the chunks level 
and then sort it over here in these sorting machines, this time with the green catalyst, and that produces um, the, that produces the what do we call it? The what is the silicon ore? There we go. <laughs> this, that produces the silicon ore that we're trying that I need for the for the electronic circuits, but it produces at a high enough rate that, as you can see, these warehouses are both now completely full, and that didn't take very long at all. One of the other differences between um, between the uh, that you, you get with this level is instead of it just producing, so when I crush the initial ores, so the, the sapphire or the um, bobmonium, it produces the crushed bobmonium ore and crushed stone as well. That's fine. I'm sorting it out up here. That goes off to be taken away by, by another train. When you when you uh, use the flotation cells, for one thing, it produces the this. Um, it, it requires purified water as an input to presumably do the floating in, and it produces the sulfuric waste water as an output, and that needs dealing with as well. And that could be relatively easily turned into either sulfur or um, sulf and then on sulfuric acid. But the problem the problem is I've, I'm producing sulfuric acid so much faster than I'm generating it, so I've, I've ended up actually just throwing most of this away. It's going straight into these clarifiers here and being got rid of. Uh, I am no, I'm not even I'm not even trying to filter it first. It, it, there's just too much of it, so um, I've ended up dumping it, which feels a bit a bit wrong. But I know it's here if I if, if I if I need it. It also produces these um, geode crystal things that you can see being held up there and on this on this belt here, and those can be crushed down. And I believe that produces uh, crystal dust and and more crushed stone, which is quite useful. Again, that's being piped off off to these stations over here, where we've got this one that's filling up with crystal dust, this one's filling up with crushed stone, and those. We're feeding over to here to this facility, which is taking in the the crystal dust here and the crushed stone here, and then turning those into the into the ca uh, catalysts. So this this unfortunately is not a, is not a um, a closed loop system. You don't produce as much crushed stone crushing the ore as you need as you require to make the catalyst used to um, to process it. So. My current problem, which I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to touch on more in the next episode because that's what the next episode is going to be largely about, is trying to trying to produce enough catalyst to keep everything running. But it, but at the moment, I'm okay, I seem to be okay for the um, for the crystal dust, which gets turned into the green catalyst. You can then also combine the two to make the um, orange catalyst, which has all disappeared into these into these chests over here. Okay, and this. This is essentially a slightly scaled up version of the one I used to have hanging off the bottom of my iron refining system. That was in, so it was in down here, but I've, I've pulled that up now. That's why there's some random ch uh, tanks of sulfuric acid left behind. Uh, so that, that worked quite well, but it wasn't, it wasn't dealing with it on a big enough scale. So I moved it, I moved it all down here and this is now, it, it works. It's just a bit short of inputs. So those are the first two things I've been up to recently. There's um, a little bit more that I'm going to go into in the next episode, but essentially that's that's where I've got to now. Um, I think actually the um, I think I, I don't think I talked about these solar farms over here. Uh, there's not a huge amount to say about them, but uh, they were something I built up in the in the sort of the limbo between series one and series two. So I've got it, a lot of it recorded, but I didn't think it was worth making episodes about it because it's just getting a bit a bit slow. But that took it. Uh, that was just being built up off the bus down, down here somewhere. There we go. Um, and it, it, yeah, it all it all went straightforwardly enough. It, the only thing worth commenting on about it was it put a massive load on this yellow belt, uh, yellow, yellow circuit board construction, uh, the electronic board construction. I think it was actually. And so that when I first built my factory over here for the first. I don't know the first. I don't know how many train loads, and, and all the whole time while I was trying to get everything reasonably balanced on it, was all just going straight over to be turned into into solar panels. That said, having done all that now, most, in fact, all of my power right now, and let's have a look over slightly more historically. Yeah, going back 10 hours, 50 hours, we can see that most of the power I've been using has been generated by the solar panels. There've been a few points where the steam engines have had to kick back in again, mostly I think because the um, the robo ports have been working especially hard when I've been laying down massive, massive areas of of whatever, and so there's a lot of lots of robots to be charged. So that the um, the coal burning furnaces are still there as a backup, but in but essentially most of it is being is now being done by the uh, by the by the solar panels. So that's reduced the load on my coal supplies enormously. If we look at the belt up here now, you can see the whole thing's just it's just stopped. 
there's a little bit being uh, probably being unloaded yes here we go and that's going onto the belt that goes around the rest of the factory for, for being used for other things but generally I've moved over to clean energy now which is um, a bit easier because it's, it's place it and then forget about it you don't have to worry about keeping it fueled right so that's that's my science episode as I said I've built all this built all this up a lot of this was built by hand to be honest because there's so many sort of individual specific parts of it but I did do a lot of copy and pasting to get the get the stations in place and that sort of thing and it is much much easier with bots and which, which is why I've now got all the all the robot ports everywhere I've also slightly extended the um, the bus down here and, and oh and up here the um, second line of the mall where we're, we're producing things from aluminium and brass gears and brass um, pipes and oh yeah and um, concrete bricks as well that was another exciting <laughs> rather tr somewhat tricky um, development but now that means I can produce things like level 3 um, hydro plants and level 3 chemical plants and and so on and so on so that's been uh, the next step of, of my of my factory's pr um, progress I hope that's been interesting and you'll join me for the next episode where I'm going to talk about what's been slowing down the factory's process as you can see here there's a few um, empty bar empty lines empty rows on the uh, on the old um, belts here these should all be completely backed up of course especially given everything's stopped but unfortunately they're not because we're having some supply problems so for the, until the next episode when I shall talk about those in much more detail thank you for watching and I hope to see you then but let's go and have a look at those problem areas and find out what I've screwed up exactly So, this one's clearly working. We've got a full belt feeding down there. Oh yeah, but there were, there were those belts to take out of the... There's quite a lot of them as well. Right. How have I screwed up here? I don't think I have. This one seems to be working okay. It's just run out of supplies. Over here, this one's again is producing, so I think that's I think that's okay. Uh yes, this was the one where I accidentally tried to feed walls to something that requires bricks. Okay, that should fix that. And if I've done the maths correctly, then that is the right number roughly the right number of furnaces to keep that in a many assembly machine supplied. Now we have, yep, we have the steel furnaces going off along this belt. That's good. Oh, I've really messed up this one. There's lots of things it needs that aren't, aren't available. Okay. Right, that's that one fixed. Now hopefully, yes there we go, it's picking up chemical plant and it's working. Great, I can now leave that running until it runs out of steel. So was that just because the belt was the wrong way around? Right, so that's going to mix with the electric engines here, that's fine. Okay, so that seems to be alright. There's a shortage of electric engines, sure, but that's, that's a known issue which I'm not going to worry about right now. The blue belts aren't working either, why are the blue belts not working? Oh, because this needs iron. Right, okay. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm playing in... Um, I've got the weird inserter types now, so I can do this. And that. <laughs> Good. That's that one fixed. Okay, I think that's all those problems fixed, so I think I re will, really will call this the end of the episode now. <laughs> Thank you for if you've um, caught that extra little bit as well. Thank you for watching, and I still haven't worked out what this station was for. Um, never mind. We'll worry about it later <laughs> if, if if things start not working. Thanks for watching.